Okay, in this video, we're going to find the point on the curve y is equal to square root of x that has the shortest distance to the point, 3, 0. Of course, this word means shortest distance. So you have to remember, you know, you are, if you are trying to get the minimum or the maximum in this kind of squares, right? And it will, of course, be helpful to see a picture. So let's draw the square root of x right here. And this right here is what we know, y is equal to square root of x. And then, of course, we are also having this point, 3 comma 0. Let me just put it down right here. And now, the question is asking us to find a point on the curve so that the distance will be the smallest from that point to here. As you can see, imagine if you put a point right here to here, then this distance is actually going to be longer than the distance from here to here. We can just kind of eyeball it. So you can kind of expect the answer should be somewhere here, but I don't know the exact value for it. Let me just put a point here, not necessarily straight up, right? So let me just put it somewhere here. And most importantly, label this with x comma y. And you have to know that the distance from here to here. And let's just call that to be capital D for distance, right? It doesn't have to be straight up, I don't know. So just put an x and y for the coordinate of that point, And we will figure it out. Now, right here we want to have the minimum distance. And when you're doing more problems like this, always put down what you know and what you want to know. We want the minimum, so let's put down minimum here, of the distance. So let's put down d. And of course, this is just the distance between two points. We can use the distance formula. So we'll just take the square root here. And let's do the distance formula this way. Let's do x minus 3, so that's the first one, and don't forget to square that, and then you add the other part, which is y minus 0, like this, and don't forget to square that. Well, well, this right here is good, but it's not good enough yet. We are not ready to take the derivative in this kind of situation, because we're in calc 1. We don't want to have x and y in our formula, right? You can deal with this in calc 3. That's the multivariable calculus, but that's later on. Anyway, this is an easy fix, because always refer back to what we know. We know y is equal to square root of x. Therefore, I can come back here and look at the y as square root of x. I'll just do replacement. So as you can see, you will get square root, and this is x minus 3 squared plus, this is just that, namely square root of x minus 0 and square. Now by looking at this, this is expression in terms of just x. So I can call this right here to be d as a function of x. So d prime, d of x like that, right? And then that's pretty much all we need. And we have to just find the minimum of, the, of this function. And before we do the derivative, of course, it's a good idea to simplify the inside. So if you multiply this out, you end up with x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then this right here, of course, is just x. And then when you add them up, so this becomes negative 5 x. So you can look at this as square root of x squared minus 5 x plus 9. Much better. And now let's do the derivative, d prime of x. Well, don't forget how you do your derivative, even though we have a lot of practice already, but you know, derivative will be with you forever. Derivative of square root something, first you do 1 over that with a 2 in front, so 2 square root of x squared minus 5x plus 9. And then what do we need? Yes, the chain rule. You multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is this right here, which you give us 2x, and this right here give us minus 5, like that. So here is our derivative. Now, we are going to set this to be 0, so we can find our critical numbers. Well, this right here is on the top. In order for us to have a fraction to be 0, we just need to worry about the top being 0, right? So from here, we know we must look at 2x minus 5 equals 0. And then, of course, you can just do this real quick. You get x is equal to 5 over 2. And this right here is our only critical number, cn. And you should take some time to verify this on your own to see that this is indeed the you know, indeed the local minimum right here, and it will be, and all that stuff, uh, depending on how much we're going to show 
all that stuff, right? So perhaps that's, I don't want to do a second derivative right here neither. Here's the first derivative test, right? <laughs> so this is all we can do. This is d prime, when x is 5 over 2. Pick a number less than 5 over 2. Well, uh, you can put, let's say, 0. 0 is legit, right? x can be 0 in our situation. You cannot have negative number because right here, if you take the square root of negative number, you don't get real numbers. So if you put 0 right here for the x, on the top is negative, on the bottom is positive, so you have negative. And then you put a number bigger than 5 over 2, let's say 17, you end up with positive. So this critical number has to be local minimum. And in fact, this is the only minimum. In fact, it's also the absolute minimum. So just say uh, this is the minimum. Because the prime changes from negative to positive. That's the first derivative test. And with that being said, we're pretty much done. We just have to find out y value, which we can refer back to here. Now we know x is 5 half, and then y will just be square root of 5 over 2, like this. And because when calculus, that means we're all dots now, you don't have to rationalize the denominator. So in the end, the answer is just the point 5 over 2, comma square root of 5 over 2. And with that, we are done. As you can see, our picture kind of makes sense as well, because this is like 2.5, which is a little bit left to the 3. Right? So that's it. And if you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below and let me know. Right?